Okay, so welcome to TypeScript. Um, again, my name is Doris Chen. Uh, have a little more detail on this slide. Um, so I normally uh, leave my blog address uh, and my email, which is doris.chen at microsoft.com. Or you could always reach me on Twitter at Doris T. Chen. Make sure you put a T there, because I don't know who took Doris Chen. <laughs> because I got some complaints that I never replied, but I actually never got it. So Doris T. Chen, that's my Twitter. And uh, um, so my blog, uh, I put all the presentation, uh, technical demo uh, onto my blog, uh, but it is a long URL. Uh, I, I actually can't remember that either. So <laughs> if you do a search, Doris space MSDN, the, uh, probably the top two links, one of the link is my blog address. So that's a little easy to remember. Okay, so I'm a web developer. I have been working on the web space development for many, many years. And uh, uh, I joined Microsoft about six years ago as a developer evangelist focused on the web space. Before that, uh, I was with Sun Microsystem as a Java evangelist for another 10 years. So I'm really from uh, Java community, open source community, and uh, really happy to work with you uh, further on that. So I'd like to get a little bit idea about your background. How many of you here already have some exposure to JavaScript? Oh, very good, awesome. How about a TypeScript? Some of you, okay, cool, all right. So let's actually get a start with. So first of all, um, how many of you never heard about Angular? I guess not, right? So Angular 2 uh, is actually using TypeScript for their implementation. So if you start with working with Angular 2, uh, TypeScript is probably the language you want to be familiar with. And how many of you are actually using Angular uh, to do development? Okay, a couple of you, very good. Okay, so we have a pretty busy agenda, and I know I have about a, you know, uh, a half an hour, you know, 40 minutes to do the talk. So I'm gonna keep it kind of like a short. But first of all, a lot of people uh, always ask me the first question is, why TypeScript? Right, so we're gonna talk about that, why we need a TypeScript. Uh, second thing is, what exactly is TypeScript? If you never tried a TypeScript, what is your learning curve? How bad it is, right, we'll talk about that. And then what's new in TypeScript? Because TypeScript 2.0 just released. Uh, so uh, I, I really want you to take advantage of all the new features in TypeScript 2. And also we're gonna talk about, uh, a, a, a common request for me is uh, people usually say, hmm, I wanna see some demo uh, for TypeScript to work with an Angular app as well as a React app, right? How many of you actually are using React? Okay, very cool, okay. So let's get in there. So first thing first, why TypeScript, right? Because two years ago, when I first heard about a TypeScript, I actually have the same concern. I was like, mm, we don't need another scripting language, do we, right? What is that, right? So, but the more I look into that, the more I fall in love with TypeScript. So the idea here is, we want developers to be able to focus on creating amazing things, right? So any developers, if you start any development, you, you more likely, what inter interests you more is trying to develop some new feature, some new content for the project, rather than try to understand some other people's code, <laughs> try to do bug fix, or try to maintain the code in a really tedious way, isn't it? So the idea behind is really try to give you more time to work on the things you're most interested. Now let's start with something called Monaco. How many of you heard about a Monaco? It's basically a browser-based editor. And then it is actually started with JavaScript. So at Microsoft, the whole team is working on and contributing to Monaco. And uh, um, this is actually the foundation of a, 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 another tool called Visual Studio Code. How many of you heard about Visual Studio Code? Very good. So I'm gonna use it a lot for all my demo. And the Visual Studio Code is not just available on Windows, it's also available on Mac and Linux. And the most important thing is it's a free download. It's free for everybody, right? So we started with Monaco implementation. So the Monaco project is getting larger and larger. So if you look at a typical JavaScript project, 
You think one thousand line is, is, is a lot of lines already? How about a three thousand, five thousand, or seven thousand? Right? So we see this tendency for multiple projects to grow larger and larger. I would say if your project is within one thousand lines of code, it's still manageable. Meaning it's probably not too bad to understand it. It's probably not too bad to adding some new feature into it. But once your project is go beyond 1,000, 3,000, 7,000, then most of the time, you don't even bother to try to understand everything inside the project. You would just say, if I want to add a feature, a new feature, I would just do a wrapper around the existing thing, right? And adding something into it so that I don't break the previous code, right? So this is a, a lot of people just doing it. No, even though we know it's not a best practice, but just you don't want to break something and introduce more bugs and spend more time to fix bugs. Uh, so, so because of that, we were thinking, what would be a better way of doing things, right? So we did some experiment. We take the Monaco project as a, a sample, take some statistics, and we figure out people spend 70% of the time just to understand the project itself. And then another 25% to maintain that project, only 5% of the time is spending to really create a new feature, adding new feature into it. So if you look at all the number, this is probably not ideal. And I would say Monaco project is not the only one. Uh, we, we sort of like has this kind of number. A lot of project, larger project, also has similar issue. So, the goal here for us to have another set of, uh, uh, like a superset of JavaScript language is actually, this is a rational behind. So we want to reduce the time from 70% to 65% to just understand the code, 20% to maintain the code, give 10% more onto the creation, which is 15% to develop a new code. So this is really uh, what we, we try to do uh, for Monaco project, and this is where actually the motivation behind to have TypeScript. So TypeScript is really for you to spend more time uh, to develop new things, less time to worry about all the maintenance and understanding. So next thing is, what is TypeScript? Right? By definition, TypeScript is a typed superset of JavaScript that will comp compiles into plain old JavaScript. So basically, you're still working with JavaScript. But instead of JavaScript, we add more static types onto the existing JavaScript. So hence, if you go to uh, TypeScript.URL, this is a central location. If you want to know more about TypeScript, it is basically a statically typed superset. Why it is a statically uh, 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 typed superset is important because whenever you have statically typed thing, you will actually be able to provide the better tooling, right? Because if you look at a JavaScript, there's a lot of tools available, but because it lacks of the statically typed that feature, so a lot of times it's not a really uh, easy for tool to support that. Now we have TypeScript, so it's very much statically typed. It's adding the types on top of JavaScript. So that's why we could have tools such as Visual Studio Code. We could take advantage of that, right? So um, the other thing is, because of that, we actually could scale JavaScript project, just like a monocle, right? Right now is you know, multiple uh, thousand lines of code, right? But with TypeScript, we don't feel it's that difficult to maintain and to understand. And again, it, it, you know, it, because it's after the comparison, it compiled to old JavaScript, so it will run everywhere. Now, so um, if we take a look, the site, you could see this is a, the very first thing for TypeScript. And what's good about that is it's completely open sourced. You could actually see the source code on GitHub. So if you click on that particular link, you could see exactly what's on GitHub. So this is all the you know, implementation detail of TypeScript. Any new feature, anything support, you could always take, take a look from GitHub. Are you all familiar with GitHub? <laughs> Very good, so <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, so and if you never tried a TypeScript, if you want to download and install, it's very simple. Just two lines of command line. One is use NPM, right, to install the TypeScript. 
The other thing is called TSC to compile. So these are the sort of like the, the very first two things you want to know for TypeScript. Once you're there, um, you actually could have started with TypeScript development. Okay, so um, I think it's probably better if I could have just show you a demo with TypeScript so you could understand much better. Okay, so let's move on. Visual Studio Code. This is a code, right? So, and again, it's free. And it also asked me to upgrade. So it actually providing those automatic upgrade. You could do it all the time. So the current version is 2.02. .02. That's my current TypeScript version. And what we want to look into is this uh, typical uh, uh, one called demo one. This is my uh, particular file. And if you look into that, I don't, I don't want to bore you with the detail. But this is basically a very simple uh, uh, typical JavaScript kind of implementation, which is uh, check the weight of particular shipment, and then checking the email, sending the email, sending the updates. But uh, one thing I want you to pay attention is if you look into this particular JavaScript file in this editor, you don't see any error messages or warnings at all, right? So what if I change this? Can, can people see on the back? Because I wasn't quite sure if uh, people could see it on the back. You could actually feel free to sit in the front. Frame rows are not going to cost more. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to change this JavaScript to TypeScript. So immediately, this will become a TypeScript file. And if you look at that, right, so when I change to TS instead of JS, what I see here is I do have more warning message. It does say, ah, look at it, the readable. So what's, what's, what's the problem with readable? Basically, it says it's not assigned to a parameter for this property descriptor. So it has a problem with this readable. But remember, in the JavaScript file, I don't see an error message, isn't it? Right? So with TypeScript, you do a pre-checking so we know this particular one is not there. OK, how do we fix it? So we could actually go to this define property, which is a method. And we just go to the definition. And you will see this is a definition file to defining that defined property. And you go through that method, you will see there's another attribute called property descriptor. So I'm going to look into the definition of this, and you will see very easily that there is a writable parameter there instead of what I put there, readable. <laughs> right? So with this, you could actually go back to say, ah, this is not a, a readable. This should be writable. All right, now the little warning sign is gone, right? So that's good. Let's save it. The next thing we want to look into is there's another little warning message here. It says ship weight. So what it says, it says cannot be applied to type to a number, right? So we were saying, hmm, ship weight. I thought it's a function, right? It's a method. We return, which is here, return uh, something like a number, right? But why it's not a really, uh, uh, it's complaining? The reason it's complaining is it forget to put parentheses, which is a very common mistake in JavaScript word. <laughs> if you don't put, if you, if you think you call it a function, but if you actually didn't put a parentheses or whatever, it wouldn't complain. It would still say it's OK. But with TypeScript, which is more strictly typed, it will tell you immediately there's something wrong. Right? So you don't have to, like typical JavaScript implementation, you don't have to wait until the runtime and you see a bunch of, uh, uh, you probably wouldn't see the uh, error message because JavaScript, you wouldn't be able to see the compilation error message. You probably just see the end result. Either it's a blank screen or you see some error code, right? And then you don't know what's going on. Still have to roll back. Okay, so this, at least I know, I'm not making the correct function call. So I correct here, right? Okay, so another one which is complaining here is it says this trim. It says this trim should, uh, uh, does not uh, work with a number type. So we see what's going on here. So let's, let's look into this function, which is actually defining this val and the idx. So for each that function, it's expecting a value and a number. Now the way we put it is actually we reverse the order. Right, so that's why we are actually getting the complaint says value is a number. It cannot do trip. Okay, so let's reverse it. Now those things is actually pretty uh, common, 
when you're doing JavaScript development because it, you probably wouldn't be able to figure out exactly what's going on until the runtime. But now, look at it, it's all gone, right? So very nice, so I save it and I will be able to just to compile it, right? So that's, that's pretty good, isn't it? Now, how many of you are actually working with a project which was multiple JavaScript in the project? Okay, so if that's the case, you probably just say, ah, this is just kind of Mickey Mouse kind of file you, know, you want me to work with, but I want to work with a real project. What should I do next? So if you look into that, I could actually very easy with this Visual Studio tool, you could open a command line and you could actually just do TSC dash dash init. So what that will gives you is a default TS configuration file for that. Now, what's in there? The most important thing you want to pay attention is basically you will say the target JavaScript, target for ECMA 6.5 or ECMA 6 some other number, right? But default is ECMA 6.5. Why is that? Because all the modern browsers more likely will support ECMA 5. But then some browser will su support some ECMA 6, not all browser will support that. So there will be some kind of distinguish here. You will be able to fix like a reset or something here for your target uh, so that later on you could run in the browser. But we will talk about how it work so well with your development cycle. So let's, let's take a quick look. So this one thing, like I said, this is just one file, right? What if I have uh, multiple, multiple JavaScript? So I will be able to use something called allow.js and I'm gonna turn this one into true. Oh, get one more code in here. And also I'm gonna actually uh, put a little um, directory. That's my output directory called out. All right. So afterwards, I'm going to actually save it. But before I save it, I'm going to do something kind of a little tricky here. Uh, this is something you may want to use. It's called TSC WW dash dash W, meaning watch. What, what mean watch mode? If there's any change in the project, it will automatically compile to JavaScript or to the, all the most updated version, right? Once you save it. So if you're looking to, if I save this project, configuration file, and you should be able to see, boom, there is a direct directory called out, and there would be a particular JavaScript called demo.js, which is actually compiled from this demo.ts, right? So that's pretty good, and you could actually take a look at the demo.js as actually really almost identical with the previous TS file. It's just compiled in, in the runtime to a JS file. Now, let me actually open this one to the side so that you could see a little better of what I would do next. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to adding some EGMA 6 feature into it, okay? How many of you are familiar with EGMA 6? Like a defining class, general, okay. So this is basically using the EGMA 6 feature which is I use new definition called a constant, const. I use a lat, I use a class, I create a class called a customer, and I have all the public variables and the constructor, right? So if you don't really understand const or lat, it's your homework, go home and figure it out. So basically this is the Agma 6 new feature. Now, once we put it there, remember that the JSON file says the target is five, right? So if I do this, and I do a save, and what you will see here is, because it's an ECMA 5, so it does not support all the class definition, the constant, the let, so it will just translate still as a variable, right? So what does this mean to you? Mean, meaning you could try all the new feature in ECMA 6 or even 7. But then once you define your configuration file, the target is ECMA 5, it will automatically compile into the JavaScript, which will run fine in all the browsers, right? So you don't have to worry about, ah, this browser support that feature, 
from ECMA five, uh, 6 or 7, you could just directly use it, right? So that's good. And so I will show you something magic. So you say, what if I change this to ECMA 6? What's going to happen? Okay, let's take a look. Let's change it to ECMA 6. Let's save it. Ooh, what do you see here? So constant, let, cross, all the constructor, all working fine. Isn't that cool? So now it's ECMA 6. So you could actually easily, because the target is ECMA 6, you could easily, you know, uh, compile your, you know, Java, basically TypeScript compiler will actually compile all those new features into the ECMA 6 compatible JavaScript. So you don't have to worry about that. You could take advantage of doing the, all the new feature, using all the new feature, let a TypeScript compiler to worry about that, right? So you see I could do upgrade, I could also change it back to five to downgrade, right? It's all good, right? So just for the fun, we could change it to any meter, change it back to five, right? So very easy to do, isn't it? All right, so one more thing I want to actually show you here is what if I have a multiple project called, uh, another JavaScript called a Foo, and I want to just leave it a very simple, it's a cross called a foo. So it's a combination. And maybe I would do call a method called display. Let me actually go back to the purpose one to make sure it's calling the right thing. Ah, well, let me do this first. Let's do it in the constructor, adding. Display method. Oh, delivery method. Sorry, no one <laughs> couldn't find it. Delivery method. Let me call it here. And this is in TypeScript, right? And then let me also call it at foo.js, which is my okay. My JavaScript part. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I'm adding allow.js. I will actually adding all the, say, you could actually change your JavaScript one at a time. Say, I'm, I'm choosing to choose this particular demo one to TypeScript. But for the rest of the project, you still have 10, say, JavaScript file there, right? So you would be able to actually just keep all the JavaScript file, leave it the way it is, and then you could actually um, see the output which is actually compile all the demo one and the foo into the directory so that you don't have to worry about changing everything into TypeScript all at once. You would be able to do it gradually, one file at a time or one function at a time. So that will actually really give you some uh, easy time to do your development cycle, isn't it? Okay, now one thing, you know, people ask me about refractor, right? So how does it work, right? How well does it work? Okay, so let's go back to here. Let's say, uh, I have this uh, delivery method. Let me actually uh, close this one because we've done with this. And let's take a look at this guy here and you will see in the same file I have two occurrence. So I'm gonna actually do a rename into something. I definitely know it's different. So you see delivery method is changed as well as delivery method here is changed. How about that foo.js? I just put there. Does it change? Anybody wanna guess? Yay, it's all changing to different method. So basically meaning refactoring is working across all the JavaScript and TypeScript inside of your project. So you could actually change, do name convention to change anytime. And obviously you would be able to change it from this particular one to the original one. Delivery method, it changed it in a JavaScript, foo.js. And if you look at the back, everything is changed already in the TypeScript. Isn't that cool? So you don't have to worry about if you change something inside your project, you have to worry about the change every single file. Visual Studio Code will allow you to do refactoring pretty easy. All right, enough about this demo. So let's go back to uh, move on to some other uh, cool things. So in this demo, basically what I did here is I changed a typical JavaScript into a TypeScript. And with the TypeScript, because it's statically typed, so that you would be able to see pre compilation warning and errors. And then you could fix it before you get into the real-time running. 
And then I also showed how you could actually set up a different target so that you would be able to do downgrade, upgrade uh, with a compatible JavaScript of your choice. And then I uh, also uh, showed you how to allow a little parameter called allow.js. So if you have multiple JavaScript inside of your project, you could actually do it one at a time, and including all the TypeScript and the JavaScript into the final project. Okay, so afterwards we want to talk about TypeScript. But JavaScript is TypeScript. So show me the hands again. How many of you actually know JavaScript already? Very good, congratulations. You could have put a TypeScript on your resume. Because basically, if you understand JavaScript, you do understand TypeScript. Because TypeScript is just a superset of JavaScript, right? But remember, I'm a Java, I was a Java evangelist with Sun before. So I do work with a lot of people from a sort of object-oriented background, right? They're not already familiar with the scripting language. So a lot of times they always ask me, they say, hey, Doris, do you think I could start with TypeScript directly without learning JavaScript? The answer is no. You really have to understand JavaScript. And then you probably 90% there to really leverage a TypeScript. You do have to understand JavaScript, right? It's not a try to replacing uh, uh, like an uh, object-oriented kind of press from object-oriented to, to the scripting language. Basically, it is JavaScript, right? You have, to, you have to sort of familiar with. So this is something, basically, I would say TypeScript is basically adding uh, optional types on top of JavaScript. So you could look at that. So a lot of times people say, hmm, I don't care about a TypeScript. C could I still work with JavaScript? Totally fine. You could actually rename all your JavaScript to TypeScript and without changing anything or without taking advantage of any of the new feature I'm about to talk about in TypeScript. It's totally working fine. Just by doing the uh, JavaScript to TypeScript itself, it will give you all the pre-warning message. It will help you to develop your code, help you to debug your code, isn't it? Okay, so that's what one thing. The other thing is, you know, um, I, I keep on getting this question. People actually want to understand how TypeScript compiler works. And it's very, very simple because the idea here is you develop your JavaScript with all the ECMA 6 or 7 or future feature and then let a TypeScript compiler to do the work for you. You set up your target and then TypeScript compiler will do the work for you. So eventually you still work with the, the, uh, the plain old JavaScript at the end, right? Okay, so um, the reason a lot of people still have this concern is it is very true. If you look at this uh, kind of like a web space JavaScript kind of like evolving diagram, you will see um, we actually, you know, by, by, by the way, how many of you know EGMA 6 is actually called ES2015? <laughs> very good, okay. So move on if you, ECMA 7 is called ES2016 and so on, okay. So this is a new name convention, right? But I know for most developers, we still remember ES, ECMA 6, ECMA 7 instead of put a year there. But in reality, all the new features come in every single year because if you look at their name convention, that suggests we're gonna have an ES2017 next year very soon, isn't it? So the JavaScript development world become more complex. I would say a couple of years ago, when I talked to people like you guys, you guys probably wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't ask, say, huh, are you an ECMA 5 developer or ECMA 6 developer? But now, when we talk, we probably will say, uh, uh, is that an ECMA 6 you're familiar with or is it ECMA 5, right? So there are more features added into JavaScript world, getting things more complicated, and then you have more new stuff to learn. And then unfortunately, there's always a little gap, right? For example, not all the modern browsers support all the features, new features from ECMA 6. And then next year is coming up. This is already December, right? So we have a new ECMA uh, uh, version next year. And you will see same story, right? Some browser will support some features, some browser wouldn't. So it is actually makes sense to have some compiler will actually help developers say, you go have you with a new feature. You set up your target. And we will worry about the rest of the compatibility issue who is a browser with the JavaScript version. And this is actually a very big thing about a TypeScript compiler. Right? But this is just kind of like insight. You don't have to really worry about that because this is already inside a TypeScript. 
uh, so you don't have to worry about how to config TypeScript, compile all those things. It's there, it's out of box. Okay, but a good advantage is re-emphasize. You could actually take a future, Egma feature, combining with TypeScript, and then let the TypeScript compiler to do the work. Eventually, you will actually compile into JavaScript compatible with Egma 5, Egma 6, Egma 7, or Egma of your choice. I think the lowest support is Egma 3. All right, so next, probably you are sort of uh, interesting to find out is what's new in TypeScript, right? So I'm gonna actually skip a little bit about the new features because I think just by talking about new features alone, it would take another uh, full session to talk about. So I'm gonna skip it just a little bit, but then show you these are the new features available uh, for the uh, TypeScript 2.0 as well as Agma 6. So the idea of TypeScript 2.0 is fully support all the new Agma features. We usually take what we call the third iteration of the uh, proposal. Once it's complete the third, then we start to support, right? Because we know it's probably more likely that feature is gonna make it, right? So we support it in TypeScript. So TypeScript 2.0 is, is, is available, and it's very exciting. And then there are so many new features into it, but I probably don't have room to go over all of them. But I wanna actually point two of them, which is very, very interesting for, uh, uh, for you to sort of look into. One is called non-notable types, the other is control flow analysis. I will do a demo to show you what are they. But before I do the demo, I like to actually talk about what I mean notable types, because this is the most uh, want, demanded feature from the community. So TypeScript is open source project, so you could actually have your voice to be heard. You could say, I want this particular feature to be implemented in TypeScript. And we look at all the voting, right, and see uh, how many votes they are, we implement that. So go back to the notable types. If you look at that, they're basically three types of those things, number, string, and a boolean. But if you look into different things, you will see there is a valid kind of data, as well there's also defined and null kind of types within the primitive data type in JavaScript, isn't it? Right, so sometimes you will feel it's, it's, it's weird because you always have to check if it's not null, if it's not undefined, I wanna make sure it's real data. You always have to do that. So in TypeScript we say, why don't we remove the other two now or undefined outside of primitive data type? Instead of have three primitive data type, I have five, right? Number, string, booting, and then now and undefined, right? So in that case, it's a lot easier to do checking. It's a lot easier to do the rest of the development. So if you look at a nullable type, if we want to represent that number, very easy. I use a union type, which is say, it's a number, in this case in TypeScript, number meaning all valid data, right? Or it could be a null data, or it could be an undefined data. So once we separate these two into such a fashion, but use union to sort of combine them together, this actually represents the full blossom data type in the JavaScript definition. Get that? All right, so what's so cool about that, right? That's your next question. Let's actually take a quick look, let me, uh, I could Close this project, all right, and just leave this project. Okay, are you ready for some kind of interview questions? <laughs> okay, this is a very typical question for any JavaScript developer. You go to an interview, people will ask you the difference between double equal sign and a triple equal sign. Do you guys know the difference? Some people do, nodding. Some people say, mm, I have to look into Stack Overflow. This is probably one of the common, sort of the most popular topic in Stack Overflow. People still struggle with double, triple. And I, I, I totally agree with you. As a, as a background is from Java community, I, I, I actually don't understand why we have so many things, double and triple equals to, to deal with that. I don't know. Uh, so uh, let's take a look. Can you see it okay, the code? Okay, so, so let's take a look. So it says this is a testing for something called S. S could be a string, or string array, or null, or undefined. So basically it says S has all those types of data. Now, how do we make sure that a particular nullable type is working in TypeScript? One trick thing to do is here, there is a configuration file, there's one called a strict null checks. You wanna turn it to true. If you turn it to false, then it doesn't have this kind of nullable new type. It will still, for with uh, JavaScript. 
So if you don't like this feature, totally fine. Just turn this parameter into false, right? But now I want to take advantage so I turn it into true. Okay, so go back to this. And uh, would you want to guess if S, what is the type of S? Okay, so you have to think about it. I have so many different types, right? So I do a checking. So this is pretty good. With this tool, it very clearly tells me it's a string or string of array. Okay, not too bad. And else, obviously, with all my callable analysis, it will say the rest of them is, is a string now and undefined, right? So that's pretty good, right? Now, how about the, the <laughs> triple equal sign with object? What is S? S triple equal to object, what is S? You would have seen it's a string, a string array, right? However, did you think there's a now there? Because now it's an object. I get some of you, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so with this tool, you could very easily to see there's a now. And then obviously the S here is a string and undefined. Same thing, double equal sign says undefined. This is what? This is now an undefined. Because now is double equal sign with the undefined, right? So basically, you know, I'm not going to repeat the, uh, all of them because basically with the two, uh, you would be very easy to see what's going on. And then this is a triple equal sign with undefined. This is truly, it's undefined. That's why this is undefined and the rest of the type is belong to the next one. Okay, so this is really taking advantage of the normal type and the, 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 the flow analysis. Think about it, if you don't have this tool, you probably were struggling with all the double equal sign and the triple equal sign, isn't it? You're probably not quite sure because you don't know what to expect. So this is a really uh, pretty cool feature. If you want to take advantage, go ahead to do that. Because I checked my old JavaScript code. A lot of times I'm spending is doing the type checking. If you go back, you probably do the same thing. All right, I'm almost running out of time, but I actually would love to actually uh, show you a, a very quick demo uh, because I actually said in my abstract says it works very well with um, with Angular as well as with the React. Which one you want to see, with Angular or React? All right, cool. I know this is what you're going to ask. Okay, very cool. So this is a React. Let me actually, this is a React project. And I guess your question will be, because Angular is using TypeScript, so obviously it's easy. But how about a React, right? We have a JS file, we have the JSX file, right? So the good news here is TypeScript fully supported React. So we actually have JavaScript to TS file. We have JSX to TSX. So you could do actually the same thing. Instead of called JSX, it's called TSX, right? So in this particular one, it's a very simple um, kind of implementation. What I, what I did here is basically uh, I'm actually using a Reddit uh, data, which is a JSON data. It's pull all the interesting pictures from Reddit uh, if you want, you could take a look what's behind the JSON data. This is basically the JSON data I'm pulling from uh, this particular site. And what I want to do here is I want to actually, uh, first of all, uh, try to use uh, all the response from the JSON file and then uh, go through the submission and then um, and then uh, one thing like you, what you could see is, for example, I said API response, what is that? I could go to definition, which is my another level, which is another TSX, which is going to the interface, explain what is API response, what is the submission. And uh, if you're into the index, you will see how we set up a URL, how we actually go through that and getting all the JSON data we want. And then the Reddit submission TSX is actually the one is actually getting all the result display on the page. So let's actually just based on this, let me kill this, and uh, let's do a quick demo. So if I do open command line, um, and if, if I do HTTP server, and you will see, if I do HTTP, Local host 880. You will see a bunch of stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's with the URL and with all the time when we submitted the picture. But uh, but last but not least is what if I getting an image there? Let's see how easy it is. You're adding this particular image URL as well as the pictures. 
And then you could actually do, uh, let's do uh, something quick. I use a webpack. Did I save it? Make sure I save it. I'm gonna do a webpack to compile the whole thing. And then uh, you will see. It should be updated now. Okay, let's do a shift to reload. Now you see all the images adding up. So this is really using a React, take advantage of JSX to TSX, and then I probably running out of time, but you actually will be able to see quickly the refactoring, uh, everything is, is working. For example, I could have really refactoring everything here uh, to new version as well as I could actually go even to the definition to actually you could uh, quickly show what is really going on there. Okay, so I think I'm running out of time. I was gonna give you uh, uh, five minutes for Q&A, but I could stay here uh, uh, additional time. But if you wanna remember one thing, you know, uh, I think this is a slide that you probably wanna remember. Uh, this is just go to that site and uh, take a quick look of this TypeScript and then it will show you exactly what's going on. If you're a beginner, it also has a TypeScript, a JavaScript kind of side-by-side -side kind of tool, so you could see how you're gonna combine to JavaScript, what's the advantage or new features in TypeScript. Thank you very much. <laughs>